Hello everyone, hope you're having a great weekend so far. Long weekend, a happy long weekend to our American friends. This is hilarious. I forgot to unmute Jada's mic. It's my fault. I will take the hit for that. Hold on. Here we go. Free husband's dream. <laughs> <laughs> now you can be heard, my sweetness. Okay. So now, now you can hear me. Can everybody? <laughs> We have to mess up something when we oh start. It's like, it's our thing. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I hope you can all hear me now. Mr. and Stitches has unmuted me. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a, every husband's dream to be able to mute his wife. <laughs> yes, no Oreos for the mister. <laughs> Um, okay, today we are going to start our Baby Dolls of the World Crochet Along. I'm super excited about this. Um, to start, we're going to talk about uh, materials and hooks and some of the other things you might want to incorporate into your baby dolls. It's going to be something that you also want to design based on who you might be making it for. So if these are going to be going to um, anyone under the age of five, then I want you to be very cognizant about things that are easy to pull off and swallow. So you might not want to go for ribbons or buttons or beads. Um, you might want to consider making everything crochet or um, and sewn on with yarn, just, just to be on the safe side. So we're going to talk about that as we go. If they're for doll collectors or just friends or yourself or older dolls, uh, or I should say older children, then uh, the sky's the limit. If you know your kids better than anybody. Um, so if you know they're very unlikely to pull something off and swallow it, then you can have a little bit more fun with the little odds and ends and the details. Uh, also keep in mind that there are animals in some homes and animals love small toys. So same thing, if you are going to be giving this doll to a home that has um, very interested pets in it <laughs> that might want to steal it and run off, uh, also keep in mind that you might not want to include things like um, toy, like little tiny uh, easy to pull off pieces like extra clothing or buttons or ribbons anything like that because you don't want anybody anyone children or pets swallowing something and choking on it so um, let's get into what you're going to need this uh, baby doll can be made using very very small amounts of scrap yarn this is a small project uh, you can probably see from the photograph uh, that's our thumbnail the picture that uh, sits in front of the video that uh, we had three dolls on it and you can have a lot of fun with different accessories and you can of course use any colors you want for the doll period so you can have hair color choice or no hair you can have uh, any flesh tone you want you can make little monster babies in, in crazy different rainbow colors if you want um, and of course you can do anything for the clothes uh, we're probably going to put our dolls in a little onesie um, onesies have um, no hands and no feet showing, so it's kind of like putting your baby into a, a onesie, uh, but we can also do it with the hands showing and the feet showing, uh, and you can also shorten it to make it look like underwear, so to speak, like a little t-shirt and shorts. We'll talk about that as we get there. Um, so the things you want for today, because we're going to be going for about an hour, um, and we want to just talk about everything we're going to use and we're probably going to get started on the doll But likely not finish it today, but that's okay. The whole week stretches out ahead of us uh, We will be working at this as we go You want to you want to have your hair color decided upon or if you're going to use hair at all And you want your flesh tone, whatever that might be um, You want that handy today and you want some scrap colors for the basic clothing of the doll um, now, that said, you could make the whole doll in flesh tone if you wanted and just make um, clothing for it afterwards. I just like to 
sort of have the doll wearing a basic uh, item of clothing um, because if it's going to go to someone who wants to kind of like pull the clothing off or the clothing gets lost, it's kind of nice to have the doll wearing something like some clothing built in. Um, so that's what I'm aiming at doing today. Hook sizes. I've got a four millimeter hook here, also known as a G or a six. Now, depending on the manufacturer, your G six hook might be a four millimeter. It might be 4.25 millimeter. That's fine. There's really a, a very small difference between the two hooks. You can also use a little bit larger, a 4.5 millimeter hook. That's often known as a number seven. Um, either of those would be fine. If you're using a size four medium weight yarn, I'm using a size four medium weight acrylic. If you're using DK weight size three or lightweight yarn, then the four millimeter or the 3.75 millimeter would probably be your best choice for the lightweight size three DK weight yarn. The idea being is that we want to make very small stitches and not have a lot of spaces showing. So keep that in mind as we crochet. I have one other hook here. It's a C or a 2.75 millimeter. That's small. This is only necessary if you want to crochet some eyes using embroidery floss. We won't be getting to that today, but um, so you don't necessarily need this. There are other options for eyes. This is optional. So that's why that other hook is on the table. I'm just gonna put it aside for now. You want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle and probably a stitch marker. Then you get to hit up your stash and grab all the colors, any of the colors, anything you want. You can mix and match some of your weights here too for the clothing and accessories. Um, you can use finer weight yarns. You can even use some thread weight if you want. Um, you can use slightly thicker than size four weight. This is a toy, so you have a lot more flexibility um, than you might with something that's like wearable. Um, I also have a package of embroidery floss. I'll talk more about this later. That's probably not necessary today, but if you have some, it's good to get it out and we can get started. I'm going to have a sip of my tea and I'm going to just catch up quickly with the chat. Everybody is popping in from everywhere. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you all could make it today. Yes, you can use cotton yarn, Mia. Um, I'm using acrylic. You can use cotton. You can use wool. You can use blends. You can basically use anything you want. Um, and as a side note, if you have thicker weight yarn, um, like a five weight, or I wouldn't go any higher than a five weight, but if you have sort of that chunky, bulky weight size five yarn in a bunch of colors that you want to use up, you can use that to make the doll. You're going to want a slightly larger hook, like a five millimeter, an H or an eight, um, and it'll just make the doll a little bit bigger, which is never a bad thing. So you can use that too. Nico is in the house. Nico had a hot date on the weekend. We're all waiting to hear about it. <laughs> Thank you for gifting a membership, Nico. <laughs> and I'm just trying to catch up a little bit more. Let's see, Kathy won the membership. Congratulations, Kathy. I hope you're all able to um, at least put your feet up and get something going. And Camry, Cammy says you had a Wendy's frost. Oh, your niece had a Wendy's frosty yesterday. And spilled it all over. Maybe mate and her. Oh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> well, hopefully you can throw it in the washing machine. I think those frosties are mostly just ice water anyway, so it should come out. I hope it does. <laughs> all right, guys, let's get started. I'm going to take all of my pretty clothing colors or anything I consider kind of a clothing color and I'm going to put it away and I'm going to keep out any colors that I think might be nice for hair or flesh tone and I'm just going to toss these out of the way so we've got some space to work. Now of course you can use anything you want for hair color. Um, I also wanted to just make one little note about, I have this rather interesting yarn here. It's um, what I would consider a three weight category. It's got a funny little ripple to it. I would recommend if you're going to add hair to your doll, 
that this might be a fun time to break out some of those weird novelty yarns like the eyelash yarns or the strange little kind of ripply feeling yarns anything that you might have in the stash that's a bit odd um, this might be kind of fun you can try it if it doesn't work out you can always kind of just set it aside because we start with the hair so you won't get too many stitches into this project um, and if you don't like the way the novelty yarn feels then you can just set it aside and start with something else but um, I wanted to mention that in case you've got some of that weird novelty yarn lying around that you think might be kind of a fun hair for the baby doll um, and I say that because we've been talking a lot about novelty yarns on the channel lately on Friday we put up um, my vlog about the kind of eclectic thread collection I have and I do have some weird things in that collection that some of you had some really awesome ideas for so I wanted to just mention kind of the bonkers yarn um, that it might make fun hair so this is one of those opportunities especially when you're making toys um, to maybe try something like the the novelty yarns just to kind of get a different texture and like I said we start with the hair so if you don't like the way it feels you can just put it aside you aren't too far into the project and you can start with something else so I might try that I don't know I'm gonna put that aside that's a big ball of pink um, so hair color as you know can be just about anything um, you can also give your doll pink hair or blue hair or you know something fun if you want to make it like a little bit uh, wild and, and entertaining or a little brighter again it's a scrap project you can use whatever you've got you also don't have to add hair to your doll if you want to make this a baby doll um, then you can just start with whatever flesh tone you want to go with and that will be the whole head otherwise we're going to have a few rows of hair and then we're going to change to the flesh tone for the rest of the face i'm going to have a sip i would like to chime in for a moment here mm -hmm. uh, first of all big thank you to nico for the membership gift appreciate it um, and also our for those of you that um, prefer written patterns our baby dolls of the world ebook is on sale i think it's until the end of the week um, so check that out i've linked that on the top of the chat so you can go directly there and see it at the top of the page in our etsy shop and for those of you that do purchase a pattern thank you so much it really goes a long way in supporting our show here I second that heartily. Thank you, Mr. Stitches. Okay, um, I'm going to start the doll. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. We start with the hair. So if you've got a color of hair that maybe you want to use, um, I've got a whole bunch of your typical colors here. I didn't really have one that was like a nice auburn. I was kind of trying to find something that was a little bit coppery um because i used to have kind of copperish hair when i was little but i couldn't find any nice stash so um i might just stick with some some dark brown maybe some yellow i just kind of want to show the differences between the hair like the transition between the hair and the skin like i said you can start with just the flesh tone and not give it any hair at all because some babies don't have any hair whatsoever um so i'm going to start maybe i'll just use i think i'll just use my brown i've got some nice brown here I do have very dark hair and I'll put everything else aside. Okay, so if you're starting with either your hair or your flesh tone, doesn't matter, we all start the same way. We're taught working from the very top, tip top of the head all the way down. We're gonna use the larger hook, so the four millimeter, the 4.25, the 4.5, it's the G6 hook, and we're going to start with a cinch circle very important that we use a cinch circle for this project because we want a very tight top we don't want any stuffing to fall out um, stuffing is something you're going to need it stuffing can be anything it can be pillow stuffing it can be leftover scraps of yarn or fabric it's okay all you want to do if you have trouble with the cinch circle is take your yarn cross it to make a loop hold take your hook pass it right through that loop grab your yarn so you're bringing it up through the loop on your hook and then you're just chaining one don't worry about keeping tight control over that circle or the little tail all you need to do is get that chain one out of the way and then everything locks into place so i know a lot of people sometimes say oh i have such trouble with that it's really not tricky you can even do it on the on the the, the work surface if you need to you just take your yarn and cross it 
keep a finger on it, take your hook and go grab your yarn and pull it through, and then just hold the entire thing and chain one. And then you can unwind your little tail and you've got your little circle and you're all ready to go. We've got a gifted membership from Lucy. Thank you so much, Lucy. And Linda has won it. Congratulations, Linda. Big thank you to Lucy. We are going to take our cinch circle and from here, we are going to work eight single crochet into the circle. So when you're working a cinch circle or a magic circle or a sliding loop or a magical ring or whatever it's called, I think I've come across eight different names for this thing now. <laughs> it all does the same thing. You want to work over top of that little short tail and the ring at the same time. So your hook goes through the ring, you're picking up a loop and you're single crocheting. And you want to do eight single crochets into that ring. And I'm starting with my brown hair color. I'm kind of making a doll that looks a little bit like me. That's four. Good morning, everyone. Or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for hanging out with us, especially to our American friends who are on vacation today. Make sure you have eight single crochets worked into that circle and then you want to hold the last one you made, grab the short tail and cinch it up as tight as it'll go and you will not have any little space showing in the middle. I'm going to put it down and have a sip of my tea. Now you can leave your tail out to the back um, because it will just become stuffing so you don't have to worry about working over top of it or weaving it in or anything um, because it will just be it'll end up on the inside of the doll we are not joining our rows we are working in the round so what we are doing is continuously working the rows are not joined with a slip stitch there's no chain one to start the next row we start stitch one of the next row in what was stitch one of the row before I see a membership milestone from Leslie, member for 19 months. Thank you, Leslie. What a great way to spend a Monday. Love you all. Well, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. This is kind of nice. It's nice to have a day off and, you know, hang out with friends. <laughs> we also had a membership milestone from Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve. Just before Leslie's. Uncle Steve, a member for 29 months. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Uncle Steve. And hello. Hello from Uncle Steve. Krista, if you want to message us, you can always pop into the Etsy shop and just click on message seller. Um, you can send us photographs there. You can send us messages there. You don't need to have an account um, and it's private. So you don't have to worry about the whole world seeing it. If you <laughs> something you want to say or share without sharing it publicly. This was row one. You should have eight single crochet. I'm going to leave my little tail out to the end. We're going to work directly into what was the first stitch. Now, this is something that if you're the type of person that loses track of where you are quickly, you might want to have your stitch marker handy. Um, something smaller for the small work is sometimes helpful. I like to count as I go, so I usually don't lose track of where I am. We're going to work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we're going to go from eight single crochet in row one to 16 single crochet at the end of row two. So I'm just working what is the fourth stitch of row two. And if you want, you can always mark the first stitch of the row with your stitch marker, just so you can chit chat or put it down and not totally lose track of where you are. You know that's the first stitch of the row. Can you please repeat what hook size you are using? Certainly. I am using a four millimeter hook, also known as a G or a six. 
you can use uh, anything in the range between a four millimeter and a four and a half millimeter if you're using a size four medium weight yarn. Um, the four and a half millimeter is also known as a seven, so a G6 or a seven. If you're using a slightly thinner weight yarn, like a three or a lightweight, a DK weight, maybe the four millimeter or the 3.75 millimeter, so just a little bit smaller, only so that you have no spaces showing between your stitches. So you see, if I put this down on my hand and I move my hand around, you shouldn't really see like much in the way of space between my stitches. And that's so you can get a solid color and also so that your stuffing doesn't want to leak out through the toy. <laughs> I'm taking out my stitch marker. That was the first stitch of the row, so I know I am back to the beginning. I have 16 stitches at the end of row two. We've got one more row of increasing, and that's it for increasing in the head. I'm still leaving my little tail out to the back. The new increase, again, we're not joining the row with a stitch, slip stitch or chaining one. We're just working into what was the first stitch of row two. The new increase for row three is two single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into the next stitch. So two, one, two, one, eight times. I'm just going to mark the first stitch of my row with my stitch marker. One, two in the same stitch, one in the next stitch. We're going to have 24 stitches at the end of row three, two single crochet, one single crochet. We have been wanting to do a live crochet along of our little doll for years at this point, but uh, until recently we just didn't have the best internet quality available and we feel like this is the kind of project that really requires good visuals. So we're really happy to be able to do this with you guys finally. Thank you everyone who's popping in to say hello, who's hanging out with us today. I'm so glad you enjoy hanging out and watching our videos. It's super helpful. It's also really nice to hear. It makes us want to make more. <laughs> okay, that is the last stitch of row three. I now have 24 stitches all the way around. I am three rows into the head of my doll. And now rows four and five are just single crochet all the way around. Oh gosh, thank you, Nicole! <laughs> Is it the Baby Dolls ebook? I don't know. Is it the Baby Dolls ebook? I don't know. Nicole has picked up a couple patterns at our shop. Thank you so much, Nicole! <laughs> so, we're going to continue single crocheting in the round, but there is no more increasing. We're just single crocheting in each stitch. Row four will also have 24 stitches in it. I'm going to get a couple of stitches past the first stitch of the row, put my stitch marker back in place. I know that that is the first stitch of the row, so now I don't really have to pay attention. I can just single crochet without having to count. Mr. and Stitches has got all manner of snacks down the well. He is a perfectly happy boy today. I am today. stocked. <laughs> I am stocked with snacks. I got all kinds of goodies down here. Yes, Jada working... even shared my Oreos with me. Yes, I got one or two. <laughs> she uh, she left me a couple. She left me one or two. Joanna, you're suffering from some swelling too. I don't know if you guys can see it. I, I typically don't have my wrists on screen, but you can probably see the difference in my wrists. My 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 left wrist is a lot tinier than my my right wrist. Um, this one gives me a lot of trouble right now. You can so, you can see Jada's Jada's uh, yeah. right wrist how um, it's almost double it the size. It's, it's it's pretty swollen, almost double. So I understand if you're in pain, my darlings. I feel your pain. Just remember to go at your own speed. Listen to your body. Take breaks when necessary. And uh, this is supposed to be fun. So the moment something isn't fun, we have to pivot in order to enjoy it. Can still. So if you can't use your hooks. 
then sometimes it's nice to watch sometimes it's nice to just organize your yarn or rewind it or do a little journaling i like to sort of make notes about my projects and stuff um there are still ways that we can enjoy crochet even when we're kind of out of commission <laughs> so to speak so i feel your pain i i hope you start to feel a little bit better soon all right that was row four still at 24 stitches if you notice that your circle is just getting bigger and it's not curving that's fine if it is starting to curve that's fine too we are creating the head of our doll we've got one more row of just plain old single crochet in each stitch all the way around for the hair color i'm just going to put my stitch marker back in that's stitch number one I just want to, um, we have we have two types of lurkers, just so you know. <laughs> I love the lurkers. We have the lurkers that like super lurk. <laughs> like they watch us like a cat from around the corner. <laughs> and then we have the lurkers that are just playing video games while they, while they oh, uh, watch yeah. it. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> and a shout out to them. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit's character just went right over the cliff edge. <laughs> oh, I even know what sound he made, too. <laughs> 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 shout out to all the lurkers yes lurkers are welcome here you are all welcome you are totally welcome even the lurkers are welcome here i love lurking in live live chat that's typically what i do when i'm watching a live i lurk all right that is the last stitch of row five now mine is starting to curve i'm going to take my hook out if your little uh, five row piece isn't starting to curve down yet don't worry it will everybody's tension's a little different everyone's yarn's a little different uh but nico! you want to try and... <laughs> nico we've got some nico action nico thank you for the gifted membership and it looks like linda has won it wonderful if you um if you don't see it curving into a ball like shape yet it will so don't panic um, but try to crochet a little tighter than you normally would if you have trouble with that then go down a hook size so going down a hook size always will get you a tighter tension um, that is it for the hair color so if you started with flesh tone just pause have a sip of tea i'm going to just finish us all off for the hair so if you were using hair um, like me just single crochet into the next three stitches. This will just even up that circle. And that just basically brings us into alignment with where row one turned into row two. It's not a big deal. If you don't do it, it's not going to make anything look funny. It's just something I like to do. Then we're going to slip stitch to fasten off. If you're not changing color from hair to flesh, don't slip stitch. Just pause. Just stay where you are. I'm going to grab my scissors. I see some suggestions in the chat for dealing with inflammation. Much appreciated, everyone. Now, again, your little tails don't have to be woven in. You don't have to work over top of them. You can just tuck them in. They're going to become stuffing eventually. Um, quick note on safety eyes. If you're going to use safety eyes for your doll, which you absolutely can, it will be very obvious where to put them once we get the head finished. So don't feel you've got to rush and put in safety eyes. Um, it's easy to do once we get down to the neck if you're using them. If you don't want to use safety eyes, obviously there's a bunch of other options, but um, I put my eyes in at the very end, but I'm not using safety eyes. So if you are using safety eyes, I'll let you know when to put those in. All right, you're going to grab your flesh tone now. I've got a whole bunch. I've got all kinds of pretty flesh tones. Now, I have to say, I just picked up a skein tone by Lion Brand. I grabbed I the just, almond. I would just like to take a, a moment to sure. um, thank our viewers. Our viewers are wonderful. They're probably the best people on the planet. Having so much fun putting out polls and um, all the support and all the love is just great. I just want to shout everyone out. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, guys. A lot of love here today. <laughs> 
Getting all emotional. Getting all today. emotional. This is an emotional day. <laughs> My chemicals are all out of whack. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with my husband. You guys are absolutely wonderful. You you are so much fun to spend time with, and you are so supportive, and we just have so much fun doing these lives. I just thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for being here. Um, <laughs> I could probably just say that straight for an hour, and it wouldn't feel enough. Uh, I'm going to use my new skiing today. I bought this um, last week because I was super excited to try one. This is the color Almond. I felt like it was pretty close to my skin tone. I'm kind of an almondy color. Um, I don't have a lot of peach in my skin, but I do have, um, you can use whatever you want. <laughs> I kind of want to make a doll using all of these at some point because I absolutely love, uh, I love all the different colors. I feel like that's my, my actual doll collection is all different colors because I like baby dolls of the world I think all babies are just so darn cute so I like to have them all in different colors and like I said if you don't have any skin tones um, you can use whatever you want you can use crazy colors too and make a little monster baby there's nothing wrong with that this is a toy after all um, so this is the one I'm going to use it's almond I also feel like you should probably be able to see what I'm doing with it on camera pretty well um, but I've got all sorts of pretty colors to choose from here I'm going to put them all away so that they're out of the way and I'm going to get into this gorgeous new ball of yarn. Let's see here. Oh, it's probably going to come out this side. I'm looking, I like to pull yarns from the inside of the skein whenever possible. There we go, right up top. Thank you, Lion Brand. Not a, <laughs> not a sponsored video, just couldn't wait to try these out. This is also acrylic, size 4, it feels lovely. We're going to join with a slip knot. So we're starting with a slip knot on our hook. This is to change to skin tone. If you've been using skin tone all along, you're still sipping tea and chilling. <laughs> we're going to join with a single crochet. You can join in the same place that you fastened off, or you can join right next to it. It doesn't matter. I kind of like to do it usually in the same place that I fastened off. So if you pull up on the string, you see that space. That's where I put my hook in. You're joining with a single crochet. So I'm going to grab that little tail and pull it to the inside. There we go. And joining with a single crochet, nice and easy. And now we're going to continue. So for row six, we are single crocheting in every stitch around. If you didn't change color, this is just a straight old row of single crochet for you. Um, you might want to mark the first stitch of the row with a stitch marker if you uh, didn't change colors so that you can keep an eye on it. Obviously I can see where my first stitch is so I'm going to forego the stitch marker this row. We have a new poll going if anyone uh, would like to cast their vote just tap on the little blue bar above the chat. <laughs> I don't know what the poll is. I can't see it, so I have no idea what my you husband's up to. You are not allowed to know, Missy. <laughs> this is for us in the chat only. Nico says we're all good on sight and sound. That is so good to hear. Thanks for yeah, the tech check. Yeah, I thought I'd do a tech check because sometimes I'm sometimes I see some buffering on my end, and I don't know if it's um, you know happening on the other end. So a tech check would be great. How's our sound? How's my sound? How's Jada's sound? And how is the video? Yeah, and don't be afraid to just sing out updates as we go, guys, because we know that sometimes, you know, things can can change. <laughs> um, when you change colors, like I did, fastening off and then um, joining a new color, we want to maintain 24 stitches. So we don't want to change our stitch count. So if you ever get back to the beginning and you're not really sure if you've got 24 or where you should put your last stitch, just pause and count them up. So that's 24 stitches for me. That's exactly what I should have, which means I've got this little guy here. You can probably see that it looks almost like a stitch, but technically my first stitch is sort of sitting over top of it. So I am going to continue to work directly into my first stitch of the row to continue. And because I changed colors, I want this to be a fairly tight stitch so that I don't have too much of a color jog there. If you don't like that there's a space, this is something else you can do. So if you've got looser tension or you just want to be really, really tight, 
take out your last stitch so that you've only got 23 and work two single crochets together over top of your last stitch and that funny little maybe slip stitch or what looks like the false stitch two together that still equals one stitch and then continue into the first stitch and that will close any gap that you might have there this is amigurumi amigurumi is a bit different than other regular crochet there's it's almost like you're going more for shape and appearance than you are fine stitch work or sticking directly to a pattern so when you're working amigurumi do not be afraid to cheat add in stitches take out stitches work stitches together use long leftover tails of yarn to cinch together spaces there are no rules here the only rule is that you get a doll that looks like a doll <laughs> i'd like to take a second again to shout out um the people that tip us on our paypal account um we don't typically shout them out in live streams because we don't think to but we do have um we do send out a thank you card via email um, so a big thank you to everyone that sends us a tip in our tip jar. Um, and Ronald off and the Kathy. top of my head, I can recall. <laughs> thank you, Ronald uh, and Kathy. Victorine, <laughs> uh, Ronald, Kathy, Michael. Oh, there's a few more. Princess Francis. Princess Francis. And there's a few more. I'm going to have to look it up. But thank you to everyone that does that. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you very much. It is a, a very, a re really sweet way to help support us. And um, the nice thing about the PayPal tip jar over on the website is that um, most of the money goes directly to us. <laughs> we don't have to share it with YouTube. <laughs> All right, that was the end of row six. Row seven, eight, and nine is just straight single crochet all the way around. So I'm going to keep my single crochets somewhat tight so that I don't end up with too much of a color jog. I'm going to get three stitches past the first stitch and I'm going to mark it with my stitch marker just so I don't have to count as I crochet. We want to keep 24 stitches all the way around. Oh, I like this yarn. We are now working the face of our little doll head. Uncle Steve! Uncle Steve with a cute little super sticker. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Steve. I like that one. He's like, hi, hello. <laughs> I am so happy to know how many of you were able to make it today. I'm just so happy to be able to make this doll along with you all live. Uh, we were so bummed when we had to, to private the other video because of the whole like possible COPPA, COPPA thing. Um, that was so many years ago, so it's just, it's been a long time coming. We're really excited to be able to do this again. But it's so much more fun to do it live, because you get to see it stitch by stitch, as opposed to, you know, kind of explaining a row and then going, okay, and now we'll see you at the end. We get to do it stitch by stitch together. I want to figure out if we're still okay with our connection because I'm seeing a lot of buffering on my end. But Oh, I'm not seeing any on my end. Oh, okay. So that's good to know. But again, if anybody sees anything I funny... cannot see the chat. It stopped for me completely. So you're going to have to be my eyes and ears over there until well, I get I this figured out. just saw a little live chat from uh, Tiger Dragon Girl saying, Hello, everyone. I see there's crochet cuteness happening here. And yes, there absolutely is. That's probably the best statement I've, I've thought of all day. <laughs> Crochet cuteness. Well coined. That's the end of row seven. Gonna pull out a little more yarn. A couple more rows of just straight old single crochet to go. I'm gonna get a couple stitches past my first stitch. And I'll keep my stitch marker there just so I kind of know where I'm at. Hope! Hope okay, with it looks a super like my chat sticker. has come back. So Thank you, Hope. I'm going to make so sure much. I didn't miss anything. Hope with a super sticker just now. Did you see that? 
It's a lovely cup uh, of coffee. No, I have completely lost the chat and everything. So oh my goodness. you're gonna have to keep me uh, keep me informed. Well, Hope just gave us a super sticker. Big thank you to Hope. Um, everybody is. Ch oh my gosh, Kristen made six kerchiefs on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> wow. I am working on row nine. It is my last row of single crochet before we start to put some more shape into the doll head here. Mail is right. It wouldn't be alive without a few hiccups. There's always a few hiccups. As long as everyone can see the stream normally, that's all I care about. Um... I think it might be our computer. I think it's getting old and tired. Aw, it is pretty old. Yeah, poor little thing. Um, I, I can see Hope's uh, super chat. Thank you so much, Hope. Um, I've got a poll that I'm going to end, so can you keep your eyes on the chat, please? I certainly can. I've just finished this row. Is it considered lurking if you are crocheting while watching the live stream? Nope, 74%. Yes, 25%. <laughs> I have to agree. I don't think it's lurking if you're busy crocheting. It's hard to chat and crochet at the same time. So many people made the, the kerchief. I'm so happy to hear that. I love mine. I wore it all weekend. I wore it all weekend. Cherry's in the house. Hello, Cherry. All right, that is the end of row nine. I'm just going to work another single crochet just so that I'm in alignment with that color change there. It's not much of a change. It's a little bit of a jog. It won't be visible. But there's the head of our doll so far. So I've got my hair. I've got my face. Now, we're going to start to close the doll's head down. So I want you to consider a couple things. You can put your safety eye in now if you want, because this is about the middle of the face. So there's, this is row five. Row six and seven are about the middle of the face. So if you wanted to add in safety eyes or sew in some beads or if you had something specific for the eyes you could certainly add them now that's fine you can also wait and add them later i always put all my details on at the end and if you're still not sure about placement for your eyes you can wait until we have the neck finished we are not closing up the bottom of the head so you'll still have time to kind of be able to get your fingers in there if you need to but if you you know want a little extra space then this is a good time to add your eyes now if you want I'm going to have a little sip of my tea and catch up with the chat a bit. Hi, Zima. Yes, it's time for a new computer, Jean. <laughs> uh, seriously, I think we're going to need something with more power because it can't, it's struggling to run all of the software. It is. It is just struggling. Yeah. I'm just catching up with the chat. Everybody, Tiger Girl found, oh, you found our Bob and Teddy Bear. Yes, I love that minion pattern. <laughs> We've got free patterns over on our website, everyone. If you haven't uh, popped over to the pattern yes, workshop Yes, we page. have like um, around 40 or 50 free 50 patterns plus. on our website. I'm going to grab the link and post it. A lot of them have a tutorial to go along with them. So if you're still learning on how to read patterns, then that's a great way. You can sort of follow along with the pattern and watch the tutorial at the same time. And thank you, Joanna, for your concern. I, I, I definitely hope my swelling goes down soon. It's mostly my fault. Um, I have to be very careful what I eat, and I have not been careful about what I eat lately. <laughs> so that certainly isn't helping, but I'm going to try and get better. Now that the nice weather's coming, I should, uh, I should be a little more strict with my diet. Okay, for row 10, we are starting to close in the bottom of the head. We're going to work the following pattern. We're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you pull up a loop in each of the next two stitches so that you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull back through everything, and then single crochet as normal into the next stitch. I'm going to just mark that first single crochet two together, and now we repeat. Single crochet two stitches together, and single crochet as normal into the next stitch. So we're going to go from 24 stitches back down to 16. 
So we are at the point where we are going to take a handful of questions about today's, or let's say the most recent crochet along, which is the baby dolls of the world. So let's uh, let's start with some questions about the project, and um, we'll take it from there. Great. Looks like we're gonna we basically were able to cover materials and the head and the start of the project today, which is wonderful. Um, no rush, you guys, on this project. We are just going to enjoy it as we go. And remember, this Friday is Fair Isle Friday. We've got our Fair Isle style June calendar blanket edition this Friday. Very busy week around here. <laughs> There we go. We have another membership gift from Nico. Thank Nico. you so much, Nico. Nico. Thank you, Nico. And Crystal has won it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nico. <laughs> so that was row 11. We went single crochet two stitches together, single crochet into the next stitch. We did that eight times. We should be down to 16 stitches all the way around. You can see that the head is now starting to form. We're getting a bit of a, like it's kind of coming down. We've got a little bit of a chin happening. We've got one more row of decrease to go. So in row, uh, sorry, that was row 10. This is row 11. For row 11, we're going to single crochet two stitches together eight times. So I'm going to single crochet the first two stitches together and I'm going to mark that with my stitch marker just so I know that that's the beginning of the row and then I'm going to single crochet two stitches together seven more times. That'll bring me back down to eight stitches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Try to keep your tension tight. This is just helps keep any large spaces, spaces from opening up. But remember, you can always go back later with a, a length of the same colored yarn and weave it in and out of the spaces or the stitches that have the spaces in between. Just cinch it ever so slightly and that helps to get rid of spaces. Okay. We have completed the head of our baby doll. So this is where we're at. You should have eight stitches at the end of row 11. Um, you should be able to get your finger in there. The doll head should be able to fit on your finger. <laughs> so a handful of questions are starting to roll in. This is great. Jada, will you be using pillow or toy stuffing? And what size hook are you using? Great question from Lucy. I'm using a four millimeter hook or a G6. That's the other name for it. You can use 4.25 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, which is a seven, also known as a size seven. Um, but if you're using thinner yarn, I'm using a four weight yarn. If you're using thinner yarn, a smaller hook. Use a hook that gets you nice tight stitching like that. So you don't see any spaces in between. And this is my stuffing jar. You can use pillow stuffing. I'm actually going to try, I've got a bunch of, of uh, white yarn here that I used to crochet samplers over and over and over again. So it's, it's too fluffy now and used to really turn into something useful. So this is what I'm going to be using as stuffing. And um, I'm going to start stuffing the head. So we can do one of two things. Actually, we've got one more row of single crochet to do. So you can start to stuff your head now if you want. If you're adding in safety eyes, find the back of your head and then decide where on the front you want to put, place your eyes. And you can place your eyes in now. So if you're sewing in beads or you're putting in um, safety eyes and you want access to the inside of the doll, this is the time to do that. I'm going to add one more row of single crochet. This is row 12. So we're just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. We're not changing the stitch count. We'll still have eight stitches. This is the neck of the doll. So you're just basically working a row of nothing but single crochet, still in the flesh color. And it's creating a bit of a neck for our doll. And we then I'm going to also, stuff the head. Um, since I can see everyone's talking about it in the chat, you should let everyone know about uh, it's, how important it is to have either safety eyes or just embroidered eyes if it's going to little children. 
Yes. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning, if no who the doll is going to so if it's going to children under the age of five or a house with really rambunctious pets that like to run off with toys um safety eyes are a good option but there's a caveat to that if they're going through one space between stitches make sure they have a really big disc to attach on the back because you don't want them to get pulled through the fabric of the doll um, I will be making little tiny embroidery floss eyes later on. We do all the little the details last and I will be sewing my eyes on. So I usually like to embroider a face or sew on a face because I just feel like that is the sturdiest way to add tiny little details to a doll, especially if it's going to go to somebody young. But if it's going to older children or doll collectors or friends, um, or if it's just for your own personal collection, you know who's getting it so the sky's the limit if you you know if safety isn't a concern connie hall thank you connie connie has gifted a membership and deborah has won it congratulations um i'm going to pause here so we're pausing here now on the head we are going to um actually you know what we can fasten off the flesh color so if you are making a doll with no underclothes on and you want to make the whole thing in flesh tone don't fasten off so if you're making like a monster doll or you're making like a little alien or something uh, and you want the whole thing to be your flesh tone don't fasten off but if you are fastening off flesh tone to change for color i'm going to start building in a t-shirt a little shirt and a little pair of trousers um, or a onesie i haven't quite decided yet it depends on my my uh, my mood i suppose i am done with the flesh tone for now so if you're done at the end of row 12 make sure you still have eight single crochet all the way around you can slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off leave a little tail um, this can either be used to let's say you've got some spaces so i like to sort of stick my my finger in here look around the neck if you have big spaces in between your single crochet two together decrease stitches you want to thread up your tail of yarn with your yarn needle and weave it through that row of stitches. So maybe bring it from the inside out and then weave it through some of those stitches and just tug ever so gently, ever so gently, and it will help close in all those spaces. So when you're making amigurumi and you've got to decrease and increase constantly with amigurumi, if you wind up with little tiny spaces in between your decrease stitches, leave a tail and then just weave it through, cinching gently, and it will help close up those spaces. If you don't have any spaces or they're not that big, then you can just leave that tail and pull it to the inside. I think I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna pull mine back through to the middle and then I'm just gonna stuff it into the inside of the doll. And now I'm gonna stuff my head And this is my stuffing. This is an old ball of yarn. I'm going to just cut off pieces of it, little bits of it, and I'm going to use it as little bits of stuffing. I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time. Use the back end of my hook. And I want to make sure that I'm getting it all the way to the top first. And you know what? Good stuffing technique takes a little bit of time. So don't just rip off a great big mitt full of it and then just try to cram it all into a small space because that doesn't allow you to carefully shape um, and a lot of making amigurumi is about shape and a big part of creating shape is how you stuff something so take your time when you're stuffing don't don't use large chunks of stuffing use small amounts and just carefully go at it if someone wants to use bits of fabric that would be fine too as long as they're kind of like maybe a little bit um, shredded or thin like thin slices absolutely um, I don't have any here, but um, pieces of for a, for a project this size, pieces of fabric that are approximately two inches or five centimeters long by about an inch or two and a half centimeters wide or a bit thinner, perfect, perfect size for for fabric bits. And that is a great stuffing. You can chop up old T-shirts or 
you know, socks or something, like any old clothing that you were going to just toss out, you can turn that into stuffing, especially if you're making like a, um, I like to use that for making pillow stuffing for literal pillows. Makes it nice and heavy too. So we got the head done today. We are going to be picking up uh, with the body the next time. I'm going to just say quickly, I don't exactly know when part two is coming. Um, it's a crazy week around here, so we will keep the family members posted. Um, and uh, of course, whenever we, we get the, the stream ready to go, we try to get it up and running a good um, half an hour to an hour before we actually go live. So if you've got notifications turned on, you'll get notified of the stream when it gets posted. Um, not sure if it's going to be tomorrow or not. Uh, we have to play a lot of this week by ear. Like we said, it's kind of a kind of a zany week, but we will not be skipping ahead. Just like our other lives, we're going to just work away at this as we go. Um, and I'm going to put the whole thing into a playlist. So once we get a couple more uh, crochet alongs for this particular project up and in the archive we will create a, a playlist so that if you want to go back you won't miss anything. Keeping your leftover yarn for stuffing is an excellent idea and I'm noticing people are talking about some of the the things they they keep it in. I love this jar. Isn't this fantastic? Look at the bottom on that thing. That is a thick glass jar. I absolutely love this and it's got a a big cork stopper, like a medieval, you know, apothecary jar. I love it. Um, I also love how heavy it is. I keep it on the, the craft table full of all my little yarn scraps and it just seems to get completely filled. I end up using them all and then I, I sort of end up stuffing it, filling it up all over again. So it works just for, fine for me. It's amazing how far yarn will go in terms of stuffing. Wraith says, completely normal statement in her home. I dropped an eye and it rolled away. Yep, that's a normal statement around here too. <laughs> you know what else is a normal statement around here? Mr. Stitches, I need more yarn. Uh-huh, it's true. And the, re the reply to that is, no, you don't. <laughs> you have enough yarn. Yeah, but I don't have this color or this type. <laughs> You have like three rooms full of yarn. Yeah, but it's not this tight. <laughs> uh. True. As you're stuffing, pause, look at the shape, give it a squish. There's a lot of squeezing and squishing <laughs> when you're stuffing Amikurumi. You notice that I'm only using small amounts at a time and when I poke it in I'm trying to make sure that I get it evenly dispersed all the way around the inside of the doll. So I don't want my doll to be too squishy but I don't want it to be too uh, firm either. Uh, I still need some more. I can feel that. <laughs> Looks like I'm not the only uh, husband slash spouse that, uh, you know, has a yarn problem, a yarn issue. Long suffering. Yes, us spouses have a yarn issue to deal with. You can share photos with us by sending them via our Etsy shop. Uh, through the messaging system in our Etsy shop and that messaging system is private. Yes. And if you would um, 
If you're okay with us sharing your photos um, via YouTube, then let us know because we love doing that. And um, everyone loves seeing what everyone's doing. So let us know if you're okay with us sharing your, uh, your stuff. Yes, we um, just in case you haven't popped over to the community tab today, um, the first roundup of May updated calendar blankets for the Fair Isle style calendar blanket got posted today. There were five of them. They were absolutely gorgeous. It is just becoming such a joy to see everybody's blankets as they progress because they we all sort of start in the same place and then they all go off on these amazing tangents. It is just amazing. I love it. <laughs> I feel like my head could use just a little bit more here. I don't know how many of you were around, oh golly, back in, was it, how long ago was it when I did the, the year-long challenge of not buying any yarn? Oh, we're going back at least five, four or five years now. That was quite a while ago. So I decided, because I had an awful lot of yarn in my stash and limited space, that I would challenge myself to not buying any yarn for a year. And it was not difficult to find the yarn to do projects but it was really difficult to not treat myself to a ball of yarn because it's my favorite thing i learned very quickly that there's very little else that i enjoy shopping for more than yarn so it was quite a year i had to you know it, i some days were a bit of a struggle when i was like well i just really want to go yarn shopping um i made it all the way till december 24th all the way to december 24th and then uh, we were in a Zellers, so we are going back. It was it was a Zellers, and they had a, 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 a sort of a, a sale on yarn on Christmas Eve, and I went ballistic. I filled an entire shopping cart with it, and I've never been so happy on a Christmas Eve in my life. <laughs> Good memory, though, I have to say. Held out for almost the entire year. One more week, and I would have done it. Uh, yes, Jean, we did. We um, we kind of pitched in that year, and a bunch of um, us handed Jada a bunch of cash for Christmas, and uh, I think we took you to Michael's. Yeah, we went to in, Michael's. Was that January or was that after, like, on Boxing Day? I'm pretty I can't sure remember. it was. It was January. It was January. Yeah, we we ha actually have a video about that if anyone's curious. Um, I have no idea what it's titled. Yarn shopping. After... First yarn shopping in a year or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Cammy knows. Cammy will find it. <laughs> Cammy, Cammy knows. <laughs> Cammy okay. knows all the videos. So that entire scrap ball of, of, of rewound, reused, rewound yarn fit neatly into the head of my doll. It is not too squishy but also somewhat firm can and you, can you hold it up a little closer to the camera we get a closer look it, it looks, looks like a little it acorn. looks perfect it, you did it, a perfect little head it looks like a little acorn I right love now. It. <laughs> a little closer yeah 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 and spin it aha so there's the neck opening make sure that you can still access the neck you might want to put your finger in there and just shape it a bit there will be more shaping as we go because we're going to be building directly onto this doll um, if you are not changing colors, so if you're making your whole doll in flesh tone or it's a little monster or an alien doll and the color isn't changing, just pull up on the loop, um, maybe put a safety pin in it just so you don't, it doesn't unwind on you. And we're going to continue working on the doll on the next live stream, which I don't exactly know when it's going to be. We have to play a lot of this week by ear. So, um, sorry about that guys. <laughs> I wish I had a better schedule, but it's a nutty week around here. And of course, Friday is Fair Isle Friday. So um, lots going on, lots to look forward to. But we are not going to skip ahead. We will be picking up right where we left off. We'll be starting with row 13, which is clothing. So we start up at the neck um, and we start building out the body of the doll. You can continue in the flesh tone or you can use uh, whatever color you might want for a shirt or a onesie. So I will be transitioning to... A shirt or a onesie color but you know what we're gonna pick that together on the next live stream I love doing that I will select some pretty shirt colors and then uh, I'll have you guys pick them out for me when we go live next 
I will leave notes in the description box of this live stream uh, about hook size and yarn choices, rough amounts. I'll include all that down below. So in case you need to come back and you want a quick refresher, all of that will be down there for you guys. And um, like we said, we will let members know as soon as we know when our next live stream is going to be. And we will also uh, make sure that the live stream is up a good half an hour to an hour before we go live. So if your notifications are turned on, you'll be sure to get that. And you'll be able to click on the little notify me later button if you want. And it'll tell you uh, when we're live. I would so like to chime in and say, Jean is, asks, what is Fair Isle Friday? <gasps> Gasp! 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 Jaw drop! Can everyone in the chat please let Jean know what Fair Isle Friday is? <laughs> and also, shout out to Cammy. He found the video. Yes! Thank you, Cammy! Um, it is called, let me see if I can find it here, something about first time shopping in over a year. First yarn shopping in over a year. That's yes. the title if someone would like to find it. First yarn shopping in over a year, Jaden Stitches. First yarn shopping in over a year. Um, and just to quickly talk about Fair Isle Friday for Jean or anybody else who doesn't know, it's our calendar blanket. We've been working on the Fair Isle style calendar blanket all year so far. June marks the sixth addition to the blanket. We're already halfway through the year. I almost can't believe it. But uh, Friday, first Friday of the month is always the installment for the calendar blanket. Uh, we are on our seventh calendar blanket project. We try to make one every year. We really love them. I love these sort of like year long, like crochet alongs. Um, and so that will be this Friday. That's the June installment. But we will be continuing to work on the doll throughout the week. Um, and like we said, we will try and keep you as posted as soon as we know when we can go live with part two. Um, if you have any questions, Feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Pop into the next live stream and leave them in the chat. We're going to do our best to just talk about best amigurumi practices and doll making practices all week long. Um, so if you've never made amigurumi before, you've never crocheted a doll, this is the live crochet along for you guys. I, I'm just already enamored with this little munchkin. Uh, <laughs> I have to think about think about some pretty clothing colors. Uh, our live, our ebook, we have a... Um, a baby dolls of the world crochet pattern ebook it is in our shop it's eight pages long it's on sale this week and it's got the doll it's got clothing patterns it's got accessory patterns it's got tips and tricks for putting it all together um, for creating sort of fun different combinations of clothing there's really hundreds of combinations that you can do depending on um which sort of parts of the pattern you decide to use there's also like external clothing pieces you can make bonnets collars dresses all sorts of fun things um that's for sale in our etsy shop it's on sale all week and there's a couple other patterns on sale there besides so if you're looking for a way to sort of help support the show that's a great way to do it and then you'll have the pattern to follow along if you want um otherwise um keep your stashes handy and we will continue with the doll as the week progresses. Mr. and Stitches, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think you covered it all. Uh, Great. Thank you everyone for joining us and we will see you on the next one. We'll see you very soon. Yes. And uh, have a wonderful day. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for hanging out.